Ambala, I am Sada Home. Well, that was one of the most frightening thing I ever saw. It, the sea, because I live very close to the sea, the sea was raging to how many feet high. And because our home is like, let us see about, it's very close to the sea. So the, the water from the sea with the wind came right into our house. It was very, very hard for us. Very hard for us. The morning when I got up and I went home, my mother, my brother, my sister, my nephew's house, all was on the ground. So no one could have helped the other. It was very, very hard for us. All the clothes and books and stuff, everything. But we thank God that they get together and try to put things together again. They put up a little shock so they can live in. God for that. So it wasn't easy. Because I look in the village where I live and it's like every 20 house is like 18 was on the ground. It was like 18 on the ground. So it wasn't easy. And that morning, you know, people got up, woke up and saw the house on the ground and all they could have do say, my God, I know you would provide. That's the most they could do. And people was like laughing at the next day. But it take only like two or three days to recognize what really went on. But it was hard. I pray that we don't have a next hurricane again. I do hope so. Um, the storm started, uh, I would say about minutes to two or so, if I can recall. Um, we were on the air for, I would say, about an hour or so into the storm. Uh, mind you, the storm lasted for hours. It, 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 um, somewhere in the night, I think about 9.30 or so, um, the, the winds subsided enough for, for you to go outside to look around. But um, we went up there after about an hour when our, our towers started to fall and we lost contact with them. Um, eventually, we realized that we were off the air completely on both our radio stations and our television station. And after that, it was, um, we thought we'd sit the storm out um, here at the main building until that too started to get destroyed. Uh, when the second half of the storm came, it was uh, totally different than the first half of the storm. It was, it was much more severe. The winds were more powerful, and that's an understatement. And it started to rip, it started to rip apart the buildings here. We literally, there were 10 of us here at the station at the time, and we literally had to, to um, you know, to fight well, move to keep moving, you know, to safer areas because everywhere we were seemed to be um, affected, damaged. The roof went, the, um, our tower here fell in and, and, and destroyed the newsroom. Uh, the entire veranda was ripped off, and we actually had to abandon the radio building, move, move into the television studio, which has a concrete roof, and that is where we stayed until. Um, until the end of the storm, which was, as I said, about, about half nine or ten in the night. 
the houses. It wasn't, it wasn't easy, you know, it was very, very hard. Because at that time of the storm, there was an old man who lived very close to the sea. His house is the closest one to the sea. And there was a, a high bank, but the wave was coming over to his gallery, his veranda. And there was a blind man who was come by him for shelter. And my husband had to move, help both of them because one couldn't walk that good and the next one was blind. And he heard the wind, but he said, I'm not going anywhere. And he said, listen, you have to go. And he just placed his hand below and moved him to our house. Then our roof went, and a tree fell against the old man's house. And it was really, really devastating. It was really, really hard for us. In my home, although I had no roof, but I had like over 42 people sheltering there. In your house no with no roof? With no roof. With no roof. Well, <laughs> because you had, you had walls, I guess. It's walls, better. yes, it's walls. So all the tile covering, all were gone. Some of them gone with the, with the, the, the ply, how it's holding to the roof. Everything gone, but we could have still hold them there. So you sat there in the pouring rain? Yes, we all did. Night. All night? All oh. night. It was hard. It was oh, really, really hard. Happen. It was hard. When you look, it's like everything. You remember you went to some of the, the, the farms and you get a little chair or you get a little bed and you, it's on credit. And you don't finish pay and I even just smash everything. It's wet, it's soaked, you know, you just have to throw it away. It's really hard. It's really, really hard. There is people, a friend of mine, who got the keys for the house that built through the bank only the Friday. And I even smashed the house the Tuesday. So they didn't have insurance? No. It was hard really really hard for them but we trust that things would move on because with the help assistance from the other countries we believe that we'd make it okay thank you for coming to last Day's natural works it was as you could say still is one of the best spots on the island and the better spot in st david as you can see here it was demolished forcefully by Hurricane Ivan, and we are in the process of rebuilding, because the world's finest room was made here at one time. It was called the Lassages Room. So we were expecting the world's greatest batsman, Lara, and a couple of other great men just across this playing field there. So we geared up for our menus and nice cutleries and fancy glasses for wine for the party after. These are some of the remains from some of the warmers. And the hurricane came down and it smashed everything. The glasses were put away in one, at one side. Well, they, it sorted out them out to damage them. Everything went, everything went. That was a sad also. We said, and it was an investment we've just made. Yeah. That went, yeah. Just made an investment for that thing, but yeah. And it's not little work went into here, you know. No, no. Blood, sweat, and tears yeah. went here, you know, yeah. to bring it as it is, again. And that is uh, all my life's even here. And I've not yet was looking at profits. Still owed the bank, still indebted to it. Yeah. And there goes Ivan. So you know what it is and what it will take to rebuild again, from scratch, with nothing. And people were very cooperative. There were a few who gave us a little hard time. In other words, felt, oh no, it would not be, you know, too much. So I'll stay in my room. And these were some of the people who were on the top floors. And when the roof started to come off, of course, they panicked and they were ready to just run with us, avoiding flying, galvanized, falling trees, falling coconut trees fall in, um, light poles. I mean, it was just horrendous, but thank God, we all were safe. And it was strange. I got there and the office, it was just like if it was just swept clean. There was only flooring, just a platform of where it was. There was only one piece of furniture there and that was our iron safe. And it was so strange to get the keys, go and get the keys for the safe and come and open this in the wide open space. 
and get out everybody's property, their, their passports, their money, their valuables, everything in there, just sitting in the wide open space on this clean platform. That was funny, yes. I went down the Monday, get Monday evening, get in bed and dress, and sitting on the bed, and I went home to finish pack. While I was going up when I reached in the yard, my husband said to me, where's your father? I said, he's home. He said, boy, go. He said, girl, go back for him. So I take my son, and we went down, and we brace him under his arm, and one of his cousins, which is Anne, had the flashlight shining him. And we going up, and then my daughter and them call and say, why you should leave Papa alone? Bring him up and put him in the room, make up the bed. So after the hurricane had passed on Friday, I take him back down to see his home. But when the gallery had blown off, he was in his house, and he said that was his roof that had gone. So what I was saying that if I could have really built back his gallery to see that this is something that put Kareku and Grenada on the map, being tourism, mm -hmm. I would have been glad. Well, 90% of the homes uh, were destroyed or damaged. Most of the agriculture industry was uh, damaged. The housing industry, six or seven percent of those hotels were damaged. And uh, in terms of other infrastructure, and even uh, people in terms of just their whole well-being, uh, they were traumatized as a result of the hurricane. This is the wreckage of the house where my great-grandmother used to live. And I followed living there too. All these are the wreckage from that devastating hurricane. My experience with Hurricane Ivan, I was living in a house by myself alone, a small house, and the hurricane threw it down. Yeah, the hurricane threw it down, and I, I, I live, somebody rescue me. I live in a rescue home now, so now I have no present home. After the hurricane, everything was down. And as a matter of fact, the National Emergency Relief Organization that is responsible for disaster management, all of the uh, all of their monitors, all of the communication link was destroyed, so they were not able to communicate. Uh, and it took a while; it took about a day or two to really get things up and running with the support of Sidera. Uh, electricity was out. Uh, uh, the cable vision was out, uh, water was out, uh, cable and wireless, which had the telephone for the communication was out, just of everything was down. And it took a while to get it up and running, but I must say that, you know, it's coming back, and it's coming back very quickly. I think the first thing that will come to people's minds is Hurricane Janet, which um, took place in September. 1956. Now, Janet was a very bad hurricane. It hit Grenada midsection, somewhere around in the um, latitude of Guav. It destroyed uh, agriculture and a number of people lost their lives. But Hurricane Ivan is much, much worse. The devastation is on a scale never to be imagined, even after Janet. So that's the first thing that, that comes to mind. And uh, we have had other hurricanes, we have even had earthquakes, we have had political upheavals, we have had um, civil war, but nothing, I think, uh, is going to uh, really fix the imagination as far as physical disasters are concerned. Um, Hurricane Ivan will go down in history.